everybody and welcome to episode 115 of the Knitting Nurse Podcast. My name is Jasmine and my pronouns are she, they, and this is a podcast all about my crafty endeavors, mostly knitting and cross stitch to be honest. Um, I'm going to be crocheting quite a bit this year, I have decided. <laughs> um, and in the coming years I'm trying to expand my Yarny Horizons. Uh, I have not started talking about my sewing and quilting projects here yet, but maybe when I make more progress, I will bring them. And if I remember <laughs> to bring them down to the filming area, but welcome everyone. Um, I noticed there are several newcomers that have, you know, followed me, subscribed during uh, Vlogmas, Hall of Vlog season. So welcome in everyone. I forgot to do this last time. This is technically the second podcast of the year, but we're going to pretend it's the first. <laughs> um, and I typically start out with talking about knitting. So my first project, I usually talk about my socks, to be honest, first. So <clears throat> my work socks, aka my Be Mine socks, are very close to being done. I literally stopped in the middle of a row <laughs> with these, but I was on the back, so you can see a little bit better. So these socks are knit using my regular vanilla sock recipe that I kind of adapted from a few other um, podcasters here, but you know, I customized it to my foot. So I cast these on, um, during vacation. This is the second sock. You can see how close it is to being done. I have a few more rounds of ribbing left for the cuff and then the bind off and then it, there I have a pair of socks completed. I typically don't block my socks. I just weave in the end. Usually I just have one end because um, I, I like to knit over my ends with my socks but I just knit it, weave in the end, both ends, and then I'm finished. I just put them on. They block on my feet. I do not care. <laughs> So um, these socks I cast on during my uh, Thanksgiving vacation in Virginia. I cast on using my normal um, vanilla sock recipe. I cast on 20 stitches for the toe uh, using Judy's Magic Cast On. I increase a wedge toe to 60 stitches in the round. I knit 60 rounds for the foot. I do a fish lips kiss heel. And then I knit 80 rounds of stockinette for the leg and then 15 rounds of a uh, two by one ribbed cuff, which is knit two, purl one. Still nice and stretchy, much neater than a one by one and much faster because I do more knitting. I think I do twice as much knitting as purling, <laughs> which is always fun. Um, I am an English, English? I want to say English. I throw my yarn. I knit with my right hand. I'm right hand dominant. So I throw my yarn. So ribbing is my worst nightmare. I don't mind purling as much um, anymore, but knitting the round is, knitting stockinette in the round is just chef's kiss amazing. Hate knitting ribbing, <laughs> hate it. One by one twisted rib is like my worst nightmare. I think for, there was something I had to knit where it called for like three inches of one by one twisted rib and I struck, I struggled, struggled, struggled. It was awful. And I hated it. But the yarn I'm using for these socks <laughs> is KN Yarns, which is my own hand dyed yarn. Uh, the link to my Etsy is down in the description. And this is called Be Mine. This was a Valentine's colorway from last year. Um, unfortunately, I don't think I have any more of this colorway in stock. But if anyone wants to, if anyone wants this gain, I can easily dye a new batch and throw it up on the shop. My DMs on Instagram are pretty much always open. It might take me a little while. You'll probably get faster a faster response for like a custom order like that on Etsy because I actually get notifications for those. Um, because on Instagram, because I technically have a business account on Instagram, Instagram's weird, but since I technically have like a business brand account over on Instagram, um, it doesn't notify me that I have a DM if it's not from a mutual. So if you follow me, but I don't follow you and you message me, it goes to like a separate inbox and I don't get notified in like my push notifications and it kind of gets lost in the sea of Instagram. <laughs> so unless we're mutuals, um, you know, 
DMing me on Instagram might not be the best choice if you want an immediate response. And I apologize. <laughs> it's just the way it is. I also have a regular job. <laughs> okay. Socks are out of the way. Um, there's not too much to say about those. They're almost finished. Next week, you're going to see them done. I literally have five rounds left to knit on them. I just ran out of time at work tonight and I had to get home because the weather is not going to turn, the weather's going to turn not so great uh, later tonight. And that reminds me, I have to put my, I, after this, I have to put my windshield wipers up on my car because <laughs> it's supposed to snow tonight uh, and potentially get really icy. And I don't want my windshield wipers to be stuck um, in the morning when I have to leave tomorrow. So I have to do that once I'm done with this. Okay. Um, up next, not this project. We're going to talk about this one next because <laughs> it's next on the list. So up next is my only sweater whip for now. This is my Tessellated Pullover by Andrea Mowry. I cast this on for my birthday. This was my birthday cast on, my birthday sweater for this, for last year. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do for this year. I'm still kind of debating, but look at how different this color work looks. This mosaic color work looks at the line, at that like line of demarcation. And I actually think that it's the yarn because the pink doesn't look any different, but the purple does look a bit different. It looks darker. Okay. But yeah, this is my tessellated pullover, as you can see. Um, with this, I have since finished knitting the body in the round. This is a bottom up sweater. And I finished knitting the body in the round. Um, and I have begun knitting the front panel flat. You can see the armpit gussets on either side that I cast on. So I've been knitting flat for a little while, mosaic knitting. Um, and it's like, the pattern is interesting. It definitely is keeping me on my toes. I am liking knitting this pattern repeat flat more than I was liking knitting it in the round for sure. Um, yarn management is just a little bit more difficult because it's knit flat and like the, because of the way that the, that the pattern is, um, I have like different strands of yarn on either side of my work at all times. And it's just going to, that's just the way that it, that it is. It's the way that it's going to be. So I have to be careful with managing my yarn a bit, but this is what it's looking like. So this SpongeBob marker here is where I was the last time I've knit a good, well, so far I'm about four inches from this marker, which is where I, um, split for the front and back, like split for the sleeves for the knitting the yoke portion or just like the front portion. So this is where I split and this is about four inches, I believe last time I measured it. So I've knit about three and a half inches <laughs> since you last saw this, which is not super impressive, but I've been knitting a lot. I've been working on other stuff. I've been doing a lot of stitching this week and I've worked more on my other projects that I'm going to talk about a little bit later. So this is what it looks like. I also have to have needle stoppers on here because this, the, this, <laughs> these stitches have already fallen off these needles more than once. I use the Knit Picks nickel plated needles. I have so many of these in US 4s and US 5s because I use them the most. Um, and I love nickel plated needles because I am a relatively tight knitter. So I need something nice and smooth um, and also resistant to kitten teeth. <laughs> uh, wooden needles. I do like wooden needles, like really smooth um, laminated birch needles, but they are not always safe from kitty teeth. So these ones are. Um, they're resistant to, as far as I can tell, these, these are pretty old. Um, they're resistant to tarnishing. They're resistant to rust. So they're really great for hands. <laughs> but this is what it looks like so far. I only have about two more inches left of the front, I think, before I start doing the like shoulder yoke shaping for the front. And then I can do this all over again in the back, just slightly different, remixed. <laughs> So yeah, this is what it looks like. Um, I haven't tried it on yet. I'm My plan is basically, I did elongate the body. That I did do. I elongated the body. Um, Andrea Mowry likes to knit a lot of cropped sweaters and I don't really want a cropped long sleeve color work sweater. That just feels wrong. I don't want to have to wear a t-shirt under this. Um, so I 
elongated the body by about four more inches to make it to what I presume will make it comfortable for me. I did lots of measurements of other sweaters that I own that I like. I did measurements of my own body, which if you have someone else with you, get them to do your measurements for you, please. But I don't have anyone else to take my measurements. So I just do my own measurements to the best of my ability. Um, and so I elongated the body quite a bit, which is probably why it's taken me so long to get to this point. <laughs> Because it, I don't know, knitting the color work was fun at first for the first, like, I don't know, eight or so inches. And then it just became a bit of a slog, but I had to get through it. So I, but I did get through it. And now I'm like pretty much almost done, kind of. So I think it's going to look great. So the yarns I'm using, um, but for my main color, I am using a custom dyed sweater quantity that I dyed myself. Um, this is on my now discontinued pure merino base. It's 100% superwash merino, four ply fingering weight. My uh, secondary, my first, God, my first, what's the word? Bird, bird is the word. What's the word? My con my first contrast color is this. It is Cascade Heritage Wave in the color grape. This is my dupe, my sub, oops, my dupe basically for the spin cycle color shifting yarn. Um, I think the skein that I started with did not color shift very much, but I think this next skein is going to color shift. Uh, I think like later in here, this is the first skein that I'm using, one of two, and it is going to color shift more, especially once I get closer to the end. So probably in the back and like starting on this on one of the sleeves, I will get more of that really nice uh, color shift there. Or maybe if I'm lucky, I will only need this one skein for the entire thing because I have really short arms. <laughs> so I tend to have to like shorten the sleeves of my sweaters anyways. So I might not even break into the skein and I can use this for a different color work sweater if I want. And then my second contrast color, um, Andrea calls for um, fluff. So like mohair or surrey held double for your second contrast color, but I did not want fluff in my sweater. Um, I instead went with one strand of a fingering weight yarn and this is Asylum Fibers Smooth Sock in the color Watermelon Sugar. This came in a fade set, the Cosmopolitan fade set. I don't think that it is available at the moment. Um, but she has had a few runs of this set, I believe. I definitely got a run after the first one <laughs> when I saw it. Um, so I'm using four of the colors for one project and then this fifth color for another for this one. Uh, and I was a little bit concerned because I think I'm barely going to have enough to finish the sweater as written. But I did elongate the body by about four inches and I'm going to shorten each sleeve by I think about like three to four inches for the color work portion um before I start knitting the cuffs so <laughs> yeah um I don't think I will necessarily have enough yarn and I want full length sleeves for this so what I what I was thinking I could do is just um direct messaging the dyer of Asylum Fibers and asking if she could just dye this colorway for me again and I'll buy it as like a custom colorway. And like, I'll, I'll do this before I run out, obviously, so that I can blend um, the dye lots and whatnot. And if not, then I will just, I don't know what I'll do. I'll finish the sweater one way or another. <laughs> Maybe when the, when the set goes up for sale again, I'll just buy the whole set once more, take this, commandeer the skein that I need, and then de-stash the rest of it. <laughs> we'll see. Desperate times call for desperate measures, you know? All right. Next project is my Nutcracker Cowl. This was formerly my secret project um, while I was test knitting this and now the pattern is, has been out for a little while. So it's no longer a test knit and no longer a secret. So I can talk about it freely on the podcast. Hooray. <laughs> One less thing to have to think about. Um, I put this down once I was done with my test knitting terms and I recently picked it back up again to kick off the year of mini skeins of 2024. 
So this is a cowl. It is knit. It's a small circumference, relatively small circumference knit in the round. It's like hat circumference. So it is going to be double thick. I cast on with a, I think I cast on with Judy's Magic Cast On and put these um, bottom stitches on hold so that I can pick up and Kitchener stitch the whole thing closed. It's going to be like a closed loop. Um, and I think it's really pretty. I think it's like looking at it on camera, it looks really, really good. So this is where I was the last time you saw this. Um, I've knit two, almost two full stockinette sections. I have um, this last bit of mohair left to knit. And then I can attach my, I think, eighth color, which is this. The yarns I am using, is my main color, my fingering weight yarns, you can see these like more uh, like fady colored stripes. Um, these are from the Fangirl Fibers 2022 February Galentine's Day box. Um, it was Golden Girls themed. It was 13 minis plus one full skein. I have the 13th mini. This cowl only calls for 12 um, fingering white mini skeins. So I arranged 12 of them into a fade and then I took out the outlier and I threw it in my stash for something else. Um, I might, it's, these are, I think this was the last run of a like, 7525 sock base that she did. So I feel kind of blessed that I have these in my possession. So I'll probably use this last. I think I have it over here. I'll use this last like creamsicle looking mini. Um, probably as I don't know if I need to throw a mini in to like finish a fade or something. I have so many random minis like all over my stash. It's ridiculous. I could also just use it um, as contrasting heels and toes for some socks. I really need to work on doing that more because I don't do it enough. And that's why I still have all these mini skeins lying around. And that is my preferred base of 7525 four ply yarn. And then for my like fluff yarns that I'm using. I'm using three different colors. Um, I'm using three of the four skeins of mohair that came in the Australian, the 2023 Australian Coastline Advent Calendar box. It's not necessarily calendar. It's like a holiday. The It's like a holiday box. So 24 mini skeins, full skein, and four full skeins of mohair. I'm using three of them. <laughs> Um, and the box is from Love and Speckles. So the colors of mohair that I am using, the first, this first blue skein is called Waters. This second skein of this green right here is called Ocean Haze. And then I have an even greener skein called Growth. I think I'm allergic to mohair, not gonna lie. Because <laughs> every time I work with this, I need to take a Zyrtec. <laughs> it's just, I don't know if the fibers are like, are a physical irritant or if I'm actually allergic to mohair. Um, but like, I just, I can't talk about this for too long or move it around too much because their fibers are going to get everywhere and I'm going to inhale them and I'm going to start sneezing <laughs> and scratching my nose on camera. I'm pretty, I think I might be allergic to mohair. I have since stopped purchasing mohair um, now whenever I can. If I want a fluff as I want, if I want like a fluff yarn, I will buy um, a brushed Surrey alpaca instead. I think it is a little bit more expensive. It still has that like silk, um, that lace weight silk core, but it's brushed alpaca, which I know I am not allergic to because I have lots of yarn with alpaca in it. And I knit a whole sweater with alpaca with no issues. <laughs> um, I think some alpaca is just a little bit, I think it was regular alpaca. So it was, it's a little bit rough. There's some guard hairs in the sweater, which makes it slightly itchy. I do need to wear like basically under armor underneath it. So it doesn't like makes my, make my arms itchy, but it's something that I get used to and it gets softer with everywhere as well, which is nice. But we're not talking about this sweater. We're talking about this, but yeah, Surreal Alpaca is my preferred base. Now I do not, I try to avoid using the mohair in my stash. Um, I might end up de-stashing some of this mohair that I have and replacing it with some Surreal Alpaca instead. I do need to get some undyed Surreal Alpaca, uh, just to keep for myself. So 
I'll end up doing that at some point. And then I think Knitting for Olive has like a brushed cashmere base that is in the same vein as I think it still has that silk cord with brushed cashmere on it, which is something that I really want to try. Um, I just haven't been able to. I'm sure I could get Knitting for Olive at a local yarn store near me. There are a few within like a, you know, 50 mile radius <laughs> of this location. So it's something that I would like to try one day. My computer's making noises. <laughs> but those are all the knitting projects that I have to talk about. Um, pretty short. Usually I ramble about my knitting projects for a while and we're only 20 minutes in. So that is good. So I think I want to talk a little bit about some stash positions and knitting plans. So, and I know that I said like, I'm not going to buy any more yarn. These yarns I purchased last year, they arrived last year. They do not count. I just want to talk about them because they're going to be my next sock project through the year. So a yarn dyer that I follow based in Australia called VK Yarns. V as in Vinny, like my cousin Vinny, <laughs> K as in K, the crazy sock lady. <laughs> I need to learn the phonetic alphabet because my God. <laughs> VK Yarns, uh, they're based in Australia and they did a um, six sock set set. <laughs> of yarns based on um like bright I think are they all poisonous animals they're definitely endangered they're endangered species it's an endangered species sock set um and because yeah, I live in America okay <laughs> and these were priced in Australian dollars Etsy automatically converts um anything in like not your own if you're logged in Etsy automatically converts um currencies to your own currency so you know exactly how much you're paying before like any taxes and fees and everything so these were a fantastic deal I got all six sock sets because I automate when I buy things from Canada or Australia I automatically get 25% off because that's just how the dollars work <laughs> that's just how the conversion is um, I can't control it, but I do take advantage of it. Okay. I stimulate, I single-handedly stimulate other countries' economies. Okay. Y'all should be thanking me. Any hoosies. I got all six socks. I got all six sock sets. Goodness gracious. I'm going to start, I'm going to say something I'm going to regret soon. <laughs> so, um, I do intend to knit socks with all of these sock sets because I do love them all. I think some of them are just like, I guess less visually intriguing than I would like sock yarn to be but I think I need some less busy socks in my life sometimes so the first my next pair of socks is definitely going to be this this is the poison dart frog set I didn't share these uh when they arrived because they arrived during vlogmas or hollow vlog and so I was not talking about anything that was not hollow vlog stuff because those videos are like 30 plus minutes long each and I don't want to talk about any other haul that I got so this is poison dart frog very pretty this is going to be my next one I'm going to wind her up as soon as I'm done with this after I lift up my windshield wipers <laughs> uh this next set is the gray wolf so this is the wolf and then these are its eyes. It probably works best showing you these if I have the inspiration photos, but I do not, sadly. This one is the peacock mantis shrimp. I think this one was the one that sold me on the set. Look at these colors. This one is the red bellied black snake. So pretty. I think these are going to be what a favorite of mine. This one is called the blue ring octopus and it's a little hard to see. So there's the yellow, the orange and a splash of blue in the main skein. And then this bright blue for the mini. So good. And then this one is humans. Look at how fun this is. So this is kind of an amalgamation of all of the colors in a sock set, which is so cool. I think this one I'm going to have to knit last. I just, I have to. 
So this is super cool. And it's my preferred sock base. It's a 75, 25, 100 grams, um, 464 yards per 100 grams. I'm going to have plenty of leftovers after this of both the mini and the full skein. So the next pair of socks I'm going to knit are it's going to be this, the Poison Dark Frog. Um, I don't know what I'm going to knit after that. I'm just going to have to make a decision when I get to it. It's uh, Honestly, it's probably going to be the Red Bellied Snake. I think I'm going to get the two, I don't want to say boring, but like less busy. I think I'm going to get the like less busier, the more subtle yarns out of the way first to knit. And then I'm going to get into the more like interesting, highly variegated ones. So I need to put this aside. So I remember to wind it for tomorrow because I need to take these Be Mine socks off the needles. I'm gonna. I'm just going to transplant them over to a different set of needles um, and finish them tonight and then I'll get these started, hopefully. <clears throat> um, and then this is something that I'm pretty sure I purchased this year and I also, it arrived today. So I was watching a video from Wool Needles Hands, I want to say. Um, basically talking about dupes for spin cycle because I'm still looking for some with like a wide array of colors because I am learning how to spin but I'm not good enough to make my own like marled yarns yet <laughs> hand spun so I'm looking for some that kind of have that similar effect but aren't like $35 um, per 50 grams and ship from the UK I don't want to do that <laughs> I probably could have I probably like I don't know. I just think it's a lot of money and I love yarn, but I don't think I love yarn that much. <laughs> Especially since the fiber content isn't like super special. I think it's just a 75, 25 super wash merino blend. So I'm basically just paying for the name. It, to me, it feels like, which kudos to you if you want to do that. Lots of brands do this. Lots of yarn companies do this. I'm just not going to do it. I want a dupe. So what I found, I think what I found um, she talked about some yarns that did not come in fingering weight, but she talked about others that were fingering weight and wool. So I bought a few skeins of the Jojo Land Melody Superwash. These are 50 gram balls and the colorway is called MS04. I think it's called Harmony. And I swear these skeins were a lot brighter on the website. I think maybe they weren't. I have to double check my order, but I bought these from Webs just so you know. So these are some really pretty marled, uh, color changing, color shifting yarns. They're all slightly different from each other. I kind of want to take these two and keep them together and these two and keep them together as like almost one skein because these are 50 grams each. So these are going to go in my stash. So I have four new skeins, 50 gram skeins <sighs> going into my stash tear so sad <laughs> because like I said whips that are out and active are considered out of stash scrappy projects do not count and anything that I purchased last year even if it arrives this year as a pre-order does not count so two, 200 grams in stash yikes <laughs> I'm not doing well but this was not very expensive I think this was all for all four I think it was with shipping I think it was about 30 bucks 35 dollars us so it was fine it's something that I wanted to try and I'm sure I have plenty of like coordinating sweater quantities in my stash I am sure I could find something to use these for most likely some color work we'll see what I can do and if not I'll just de-stash them if I don't like them if I end up not liking them or not wanting them whatever. <laughs> it's fine. I know there's some yarn back here that I should be de-stashing anyways. And then this technically is not yarn in because I swapped it. It was a one-to-one -one trade with my friend Jesse of Mislaid Pages. This is, ooh, what's that? Okay, this is the um, So Royal uh, Eight Day Hanukkah Countdown from 2023. This is the Soft and Subtle Fade. I originally purchased the bright and bold set. Uh, I don't think it's a fade. It's a set of colors. And I did not 
really love them. <laughs> but Jesse did love them and Jesse opened these and they didn't really love them, but I loved them. So we traded because that's what we do. We have a tendency to experiment with yarn colors and get something that the other person likes only to realize that we don't like it. So we trade. <laughs> that's what we do. So this is the set. I don't know what I'm going to use it for. Most likely something, some color work sweater. Eventually this is an 80-20 base, which I don't have a lot of in my stash because I tend not to like an 80-20 two-ply. I tend not to like two-ply yarn in general, um, probably except, I think I just don't like a high twist two-ply. I like the like looser twist two-ply, like a lace weight, like... It's too high up. I can't reach it. Um, but you know what I, I'm sure you know what I mean. You get the gist. But this high twist, like this high twist two ply sock base, not my favorite. Um, the gauge that I knitted up in is very different from my gauge with a four ply uh, fingering weight yarn, like a 75-25 or 100% superwash merino. So I just don't love it. Not my preference. Oh, well, it is some people's. What are you going to do? Okay, so that's all of the yarn stuff that I have to talk about today. Thank goodness. Talked about yarn for like 10 minutes. Goodness gracious. Okay, so I'm excited all over again because we're going to talk about cross-stitching. And I have a big, big, big announcement. Okay. And the announcement is my dark queen of the earth is finished she's done i have to lean back so i can get a <laughs> good a good image of this oh my god she's finally finished look at how pretty she is so this is why i did not get much knitting done this week because i've been stitching on her almost exclusively so i did all of the back stitch all of the cold whore beads um, I did change a couple of things. I did use the alternate face with the hair that was originally charted with the alternate face. I did all the back stitching on her. Oh my gosh, she looks so gorgeous. And as for the orbs versus flowers, I did one orb. I did the smaller orb up here by her face. And then I did two, two flowers, the two big flowers down here. Oh, I'm pretty sure all my bead placements are correct. If not, who cares? Oh, look at her gorgeous face. I did all this back stitch. All this back stitch. All these beads. Oh my goodness. There's so many beads around these flowers. And then all that's all that's cross stitch and back stitch on her legs and the bottom of her dress. Looks so good. Oh, it looks so good. So basically, since you last saw this, I think I finished cross stitching her face. I back stitched her face. I did her hair. I did all of the beads up at the top. I cross stitched this flower, did all of the beading. Um, down here, I did all the beading in her dress and all of the back stitch at the bottom of her dress. The flares I back stitched and then I stitched and back stitched her feet and the little grass that's growing out of at the bottom of her. So yeah, she's done I did a lot of stitching um, pretty obsessively. My shoulders are a little sore <laughs> from all the stitching. I'm going to be taking a little bit of, of a stitching break just in general, probably um, until what's today. Today is Monday as I'm recording this. So I'm probably not going to stitch again until like Friday. <sighs> and just like take a little bit of a break so she is folded up and she's going to be put away in the same fo project bag as her sister the dark queen of the seas and i am ready for the next sal i'm ready i think this year i really want to try um and keep up with the sal like throughout the 12 months and just stitch each piece every month and be done <laughs> I think that's what I want to try to do. Um, I'm doing something similar with another style that was run last year that I'm kind of resuming and finishing up this year. That's the 
what's it called? The Natural World Sal by Pixel Pixie Stitch. I don't have it here with me because I'm not working on it right now. I already did January's portion, so I get a break this month. But next year, I'm picking up stitching February through December, like throughout the rest of the year. It's the way it's going to work. I did eventually finish my Dark Queen. I finished her maybe a week <laughs> after I uh, originally intended, but she is done. Okay, this is technically not um, any progress made, but I do want to talk about this because it does tie into my stitchy plans. And this is my Quick Stitch Iris. She is in the hoop and ready to be worked on. So this is um, a pattern. This pattern is from Heaven and Earth Designs. And the original artist is Josephine Wall. This is a Quick Stitch, which means it was like, it's a, it's a really small, super cropped, image of a larger photo or of a larger picture um and I think the picture is iris queen of something like iris goddess of rainbows I think is what it's called it's another it's a josephine wall piece it's larger it has like the actual goddess iris and then this bunch of irises is like down at the bottom corner <laughs> very small portion of it but I love this I saw another floss tuber stitch this start and finish it and I had to start it. This is old. I started this in 2021 and it's so small and it's still not done. So this is stitched one over one full cross on a 32 count gridded Lugana. I forgot to talk about my dark queen. Um, blah, 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 reverse. Uh, this is stitched <laughs> two over two full cross. Um, all of her, including her skin. Um, with all the called for DMCs, beads, and petite treasure braid. <sighs> and she is stitched on a 32 count Bayou Linen hand dyed by Miss Lay Pages. I want to say some of this fabric is still available. I have the link to Miss Lay Pages shop in the description. Go check it out. You can get some beautiful fabric and lots of cross stitch patterns and notions. You're welcome. <laughs> You can get yarn and stitchy stuff all in one go, <laughs> all for one video. <laughs> so this, I plan on making my focus piece for the year. I'm going to finish it this year um, by the end of December. So this is about 50% complete. And according to my calculations, I only need to stitch about 1100 stitches a month in order to, less than 1100 stitches a month in order to finish this. So my goal is just straight up 1100 stitches every month. And um, if I go over it, then fine. If I don't reach that goal by the end of the month, oh, well, I'll just continue on. Because by December, if I do keep up with everything, I should have significantly less than 1100 stitches to do in December, which is the which is the plan, because December is a busy month. Okay, December is always a busy month. And I want more time to knit than stitch in December. So that's why I'm doing it this way but it looks so good. Basically I have most of, most of the background done and then I still need to stitch pretty much all the irises. <laughs> um, I am color completing this cause it's so small. It fits really neatly in my nerd hoop that I have here. So I am just picking a color in pattern keeper and just color completing. And then I'm moving on to the next color. <sighs> so yeah, that's what this is. There's no progress done on it. I have not stitched it, stitched on it at all since the last time you saw this last year, but I lost a needle. Is it in my hair? No. Oh, well, I'll find it eventually. And if not, who cares? <laughs> I have plenty of needles. Oh, there it is. I found it. Told you I'd find it eventually. <laughs> All right, so I already talked about plans in like each craft section. And yeah, I touched on all of these. So next we can move to, so I'm done talking about crafty stuff for now. So if you would like to, if you're not interested in talking about like books and TV and movies and the things that I've been watching and reading, then thank you for hanging out and I will see you in the next one. And for those of you that do, strap in, cuz. 
okay number one I've not gotten back to Percy Jackson I'm probably gonna restart the first book in audio form again and just listen to all of them because and I'm probably just gonna buy them on audible because my god this Percy Jackson series I think I don't remember where it's on or what it's what service it's on but this new Percy Jackson series is ruining my life because I cannot get these books from my library it is a pain <laughs> and buying the physical books um is also a pain because they're expensive now because y'all jacked up the prices <laughs> I just want to read my middle grade <laughs> fantasy series in peace <laughs> but I can't so no Percy Jackson progress unfortunately um, I am still listening to Iron Flame. I was going to I was going to try to finish Iron Flame while I stitched on my Dark Queen, but I ended up watching um, a lot of YouTube <laughs> instead. So that did not happen. I have about seven hours left in the book. Um, some things are happening. Finally! Oh my gosh, this book is so long. I loved Fourth Wing. I thought it was great. It was entertaining. Really fun story. Um, really compelling characters. I love the way that she handled the dragons and how they work and everything, but I feel like Iron Flame is just so long. Iron Flame, I think, could be split into like a an optional novella and then the actual meat of the book <laughs> is like towards the end. Things are finally happening. Ugh, I don't know. I think there just needs to be less going on needs to be less going on um it felt kind of aimless and like meandering for the first half and now things are happening and I'm really excited so I'm gonna try to finish it and um probably not right now it's more of a stitching kind of book I don't really want to knit <laughs> while I listen to it so especially on like the projects that I have right now they're pretty mindless um as far as like patterns go so I don't really need to I don't really need to look at it <clears throat> in order to to work on them you know uh Bojack Horseman I finished it I bawled like a little baby once again for like the third or fourth time Ugh, Diane Nguyen I love her so much I love her so much and I just want her to be happy because she deserves it and I'm I'm happy that she ends up happy I don't know I'm happy that she ends up happy and that's all that matters. <laughs> I love Bojack Horseman. I don't know why. I think it's just the way that it is. I think I watched it during a very formative point in my life and it has just changed the way I live. It has changed my life. It has altered my psyche in ways that I cannot even explain. I'm sure we all have something like that and it may or may not be embarrassing but who cares. <laughs> It just is what it is. And what else am I watching? Oh, I'm wa I'm rewatching um, Skins UK. So these are not on my list because I forgot to update them. But I am watching Skins UK. It is like an ensemble British drama, British teen drama. Um, it's rated M, <laughs> I think. There is like nude nudity I don't want to say full frontal but you do see some peaks you know there's some boobs um actually no there is full frontal nudity so it's probably rated M <laughs> um but it's it's like it's a lot it's basically about these what nine teenagers um living in the UK I think they're in I don't know where they're in they're not in London they're in like a smaller town um, and they just get into crazy misadventures. They do drugs and have sex with each other and sometimes with other people. And it's just drama and kind of ridiculous for a teen drama. Like the actors, now that I'm an adult, the actors are very clearly like in their 20s. <laughs> Except for maybe, um, oh my gosh, what's his name? The, the guy who plays Anwar, he actually went on to be, he is like a pretty famous actor now. Um, what's his name? I don't remember uh yeah but he's he's an Indian he's a British Indian actor and he's pretty famous now and he's like really handsome now that he's not like a child <laughs> but I'm, pr I'm pretty sure all the actors were like in their 20s or older when they filmed the show 
but it's just fun. I've watched it a couple of times already. I started watching it when I was a teenager myself, when I was like, I think around their age or even younger, um, the character's age, not the actors. When I was around the character's ages uh, or even younger, I think. I think I was like 14 when I first started watching it. And then I think the th there's three like series. So there's the original series, which is two seasons. There's the second like run of the there's like the first ensemble, the second ensemble, which is seasons three and four. And then the third, the last ensemble is seasons five and six. And I think there's a seventh season that's like a where are they now of the original cast, which is kind of interesting. I think I cannot say for certain. I think I don't remember. I don't re remember much of the seventh of like the that last weird season that they had. But I've never seen Skins US because it aired on MTV and all the curse words are bleeped and it's very distracting. <laughs> so I have refused to watch it. I can't do it. Um, maybe if there's an unedited version on Hulu or something out there, maybe I'll watch it uh, just to, you know, just for kicks and giggles. But I, <clears throat> I had a hard time watching like adult reality shows as a child because all the cuss words were bleeped and the bleeps were even more distracting and annoying than just hearing the cut like I understand the FCC and everything whatever but hearing the bleeps it makes my bones hurt and I don't like it <laughs> so <laughs> yeah I didn't like that um and then I started watching Insecure uh it's on Netflix fun fact I think it's also on Hulu which I think it was on Hulu I think it aired on HBO so I could watch it on Max and it's also on Netflix but I'm watching it on Netflix and because it's just what I have and I already have something open on Max. I think I just need to have one show because it's like per tab. I usually sit at my computer to like do things and watch TV and whatever because my computer chair is really comfortable. So I have like one show open on Netflix at all times and I just hit play whenever I want to watch it. I have one show open on Hulu at all times, hit play when I want to watch it. I have one show or movie right now, the, the Lord of the Rings movies are up on Max and I just hit play whenever I need to. And that's the way I like it. I don't want to have to switch things around or move around and like risk losing my spot in my show. I can just hit play and resume where I was and be done with it. So I just need one show per program. <laughs> but on Netflix, I'm watching Insecure and I kind of love it. I don't know. I love, I love Issa Rae. Um, I tried reading her book and she is not the best. She's a really great screenwriter. She's an awesome comedian. I'm sure she's a great person. She seems so cool. I want to meet her, but, um, prose is not her strong suit and narration is also not her strongest suit. I think she's better as an on-screen actress and a screenwriter more than an author and narrator. <laughs> Just saying. And you know, we can't all be good at everything. It's okay. It's okay, girl, you're fine. I just didn't finish your book, whatever. I love everything else you do. <laughs> so um, I originally, I originally knew about Issa Rae from Awkward Black Girl, her original Awkward Black Girl uh, series, mini series on YouTube. I think my older cousin showed it to me. And I watched, I watched it over and over and over again. I loved it so much. I think at that time, I, as an awkward black girl at the time, <laughs> as an awkward black girl who felt like I didn't, who like, I don't know, I was raised with white people. I went to an all white school, uh, went to a pre predominantly white institution for college. I work in nursing, which is a very white, <laughs> female driven um, career path. So I've always been surrounded by white people. And I felt like I've never really, you know, you know, race, race issues, race issues that I will talk about another time. But I felt like she just got it. Like I felt like there were there wasn't a lot of black media at the time that I had access to that really captured that experience of being a fish out of water, racially speaking. <laughs> and also just like not like not even being one of the cool ones. You know, it's like you're the only black person in the room and you're not even one of the cool ones. How? Yeah. So she gets it. And I love it. And Insecure captures all of that same energy. 
but with a bigger budget and like a slightly different storyline and even some of the cast from awkward black girl make an appearance in insecure and it's so it's so awesome to see so i think i'm gonna rewatch awkward black girl <laughs> at some point but I just love it. I love it so much. I've been rambling for 20 minutes about books and TV shows and um, yeah. <laughs> I think that's all I really have to say right now. I'm still on the first few episodes of Insecure so I don't have a ton to say. It's my first time watching it so I'm trying to watch it while I knit so I can really pay more attention since it's my first run and I will come back. Right now um, Issa just I think she just ended things with Lawrence and Molly is still dating. Molly is still dating. I think she ends up with someone like not black from what I've seen on Twitter. I think she ends up with someone who's not black um, in a racial relationship. Not white either, but not black. So I'm excited to see how Molly's dating life plans at, pans out because I kind of relate to her a lot. <laughs> on that front and then Issa is just Issa Rae I love her so much oh it's amazing it's like it's like a late 20s to early 30s coming of age story and it's so nice because I mean I'm not in my late 20s I'm 26 <laughs> so and I I don't want to say I just turned 26 but I've been 26 for not very long um so I don't know I feel like I'm kind of going through I'm going through it I need some support. <laughs> so anyways, that's everything that I have to talk about for today. Thank you all so much for watching and hanging out during all of my rambles. And uh, yeah, I'll see you. <laughs> I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.